Welcome back. In this module we will use our placement from the prior lesson and add the connections using various layout functions within Altium Designer. Looking at the PCB we see there are SMT and through hole devices. This provides us with top and bottom layer as routing choices. Notice the tabs along the bottom of the tool. These show the various layers on the PCB. The highlighted tab is the current active layer. If the top layer is selected, then routing will be performed on this layer. To switch layers, either left mouse click, select desired layer to make it the active layer, or if you have a numeric keypad, use the plus key to move right and the minus key to move left. Before we begin layout, we will review the design rules for width, wire sizes and clearances used in our design. Click on the design pull down menu and then select rules. Here we will check the routing width that we set in the earlier lesson design rules. For this design we will edit the wire rules. Click on the routing wire style and then open the routing wires rule. We will set the new wire sizes as shown and then accept these changes by left mouse click and OK. Returning to the PCB we notice the green error highlighting on the connector J1 and capacitor C1. We will address these in the next module. For now we can reset the error markers by clicking on the tools pull down menu and selecting reset error markers. And now let's make a start on our layout by selecting the top layer and doing some manual routing. We will use the active menu for parts of this exercise. Right mouse click and select interactive routing. Notice the change in the mouse to a cross. At this point we can simply click on the pin we wish to start routing from and given that we are on the top layer the track will be in red. However, before we start routing let's look at the track properties by hitting the tab key. Here in the properties panel we can see the net we are currently routing, the layer we are routing on and the width we are using. To change the width enter the new value. We could also change the wire size here if we needed to. Also notice during the routing the net connections and pads are highlighted and everything else is slightly dimmed. This is very useful in aiding the layout process. We will track some of the connections on the top side. We can use another handy feature when we are close to completing a track by holding the control key down and left mouse click. At this point we have routed only on the top layer. As an example of routing on more than one layer we will route U1 pin 1 signal CAN TXD to pin 1 on U2 using the bottom layer. Starting on the top layer in interactive routing mode we click on the pin then move away from U1. Left mouse click and then hit the plus key to switch to the next signal layer, in this case the bottom layer. Continuing on we can route U2 and finish making the connection. At this point we have routed the net CAN TXD but we really didn't need to use both layers. This was done on purpose in order to illustrate another handy function in Altium Designer, the loop removal feature. While we still have the bottom layer active, let's start routing from U1 pin 1 and connect to the existing bottom layer trace. Notice the extra loop was removed automatically. Now we can use another tool called glossing. Firstly we select an existing trace and by hitting the tab key we see the entire track selected. Now from the routing pull down menu pick gloss selected. The effect is to clean up the routing as you can see. Continuing to manually route the next connection we will place it badly on purpose to illustrate the clean up features of Altium Designer. As shown here we can select segments to clean them up. Or in this case it is much easier to just add a new trace and allow automatic loop removal to do the work for us. Now we come to a powerful routing tool that is helpful in creating guided routing over a number of nets all at once. This is called Active Route. To begin select a number of pins to route and then click on the Active Route option under the Route pull down menu. While this may work very well in some cases it can be better to adjust some of the traces after active routing. Again using the Active Route from the Active menu, this time on the bottom layer we can take the advantage of loop removal and reroute a net. At this point we will continue to route the remaining nets using manual or active routing to connect all of the signals. 
As of yet, we have not connected the power and ground nets. This is in order to show the use of polygons to provide these connections. We use polygon pores just like power planes, except polygons are on signal layers and can include routing, as you will see. Power planes do not allow for any traces to be routed on them. With the bottom layer active, use the Place pull-down menu and select Polygon Pore and note the mouse crosshair for placing the vertices of the polygon change. Before we place the polygon, hit the Tab key so we can pause the Polygon Pore mode and edit the polygon's properties in the Properties window. Starting with the net name, start typing G for GND and select it from the drop-down list. Next we'll give the polygon a name, bottom ground, and hit enter. Now we can place the polygon's vertices at the four corners. At this point we could have switched the grid like we did when we created the PCB shape to make it easier to place the polygon. However, we want to show how to edit the polygon now that it has been placed. Right mouse click or hit escape to finish placing the polygon. In this case, the polygon has remained selected. If it isn't selected, ensure it is on the active layer before selecting it. Notice with the polygon selected and highlighted, we can see its vertices. Left mouse click along any edge and hold to move the edge. Likewise, if you need to reshape a corner, click and hold it, and then move it. As you can see, any through hole pin that has GND net assigned to it is automatically connected to the polygon. Now let's look at the SMT pins that also need connections to the GND net. Let's jump to the top layer and start a manual route from the pin and left click to place an endpoint, then hit the plus key to drop a wire connecting to the ground polygon. We will continue to add tracks and wires for the rest of the ground connections to the top layer pads. Next we will route the remaining 5V and 3V3 nets using larger trace widths. Again, start an interactive route, hit tab to change the track width and wire size for the remaining power traces. Once done, hit enter to continue with the remainder of the routing. One thing that is helpful when routing a board with polygon pores, or for that matter power planes, is to hide them when routing to better allow for layout planning. We will use the View Configuration Manager panel to show how we can hide objects. In this panel, click on the View Options and expand the Object Visibility section if needed. Here we can hide various objects, for example like polygons by clicking on the eye icon. Now with the polygons hidden, but still there, this can make seeing through a number of layers possible. To unhide the polygons, left mouse click to toggle the eye icon. Here we have the fully routed PCB using the methods we have demonstrated. We will add a name to this board using place string from the active bar menu, then hit tab to change the layer from top layer to top overlay or silt screen. In our next module, we will perform the design rule checks, or DRCs, on the board.